flipping the page now. David Hellman of the, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, DallasCowboys.com. Join us right now on the Farm Bureau phone line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team. David, week one, great game, although the Cowboys came up on the losing side of what was an incredible game. You looked at the schedule early, and you thought those were two really difficult opponents to start the season, and the Cowboys rose to the occasion, get a really nice win over the Chargers last week. What were your thoughts overall? Yeah, I think uh, I think that's a really good way to phrase it. I mean, you can't really afford to look more than a week or two ahead of time in the NFL, but the league didn't do the Cowboys a ton of favors. I mean, back-to-back road games to open the season, defending Super Bowl champions, and the Chargers are a really talented up-and-coming team. So, you know, I, I call it a win that they get out of that with a one-and-one split. And, again, you know, it's not quite like college football where you can kind of project five and six weeks in the future, but certainly on paper, the Cowboys look like the better team in most of their next four or five games. They certainly have the better quarterback in all of these upcoming matchups. So it's uh, nothing's a given in this league, but it's a real opportunity for them to make some hay and stack, stack a few wins together heading into the meat of the schedule. A lot of the talk going into the season was about the defense. It's, it wasn't so much worry about Dak, although injury concerns were there. And you, you just kind of figured that Dallas was going to be really good offensively, a ton of weapons, healthy Prescott, all that stuff. Question was on the other side of the ball. Only giving up 17 points and picking off Justin Herbert twice. Justin Herbert's been, I mean, excellent so far in his young professional career. And that's after an injury sustained going into the game, a really key one on that side of the ball. How are they able to do it? Yeah. uh, I mean, it's funny because we've talked so much about them having good health and yeah, Dak's healthy, but honestly, this team has caught some bad breaks in the early going of the season. You know, they didn't have either starting defensive end for this last game. They might be without Keanu Neal, one of their better linebackers heading into this week pregame against Philadelphia. Lyle Collins, your starting right tackle, is suspended by the league. So they've kind of been making do all over again, um, albeit with much better results. And as far as defensively, I think it's a couple things. Number one, they're getting takeaways. Uh, they've got six in two games, four of which came against Tom Brady and the Bucks, which is incredibly impressive. It's just not something we're used to seeing from the Dallas defense. This hasn't been a unit that's been able to get takeaways on a consistent basis. Uh, in a long, long time. And then the other thing is, you know, for all the hype of, on first-round pick Micah Parsons, he's really delivering on it. I mean, the guy looks incredible through two weeks. They moved him to defensive end on two days' notice last week, and he had eight pressures and a sack uh, to hold Justin Herbert out of the end zone on, on one of the crucial drives of the game. And Trayvon Diggs is another one. Uh, the second-round pick last year out of Alabama. He's got two picks in two games, so... You know, I'm, I'm not sold on just how solid they are yet. That, I think, remains to be seen. But they're a lot more opportunistic uh, than they have been. And when you have an explosive offense like this, that counts for a lot. David, one thing I liked from the Cowboys last week especially was the creative ways they were getting the ball to C.D. Lamb. I think that guy's a playmaker, and, and you know you don't want to just have him running routes. You want to try to find different ways. How much can his role in this offense grow as the season progresses? That's a great question, and I think it's something that we're going to find out coming into these next few weeks. Um, you know, Michael Gallup uh, sprained his calf in the first game of the season, so he's out for a little while. I think Amari Cooper's going to play on Monday, but he's dealing with a rib issue. So, you know, CeeDee Lamb is, is the only fully healthy of the big three wideouts right now, and we're already seeing glimpses of what he can do. He had a great rookie season, but he was primarily a slot receiver. You're seeing him move all over the formation now. He did, He had that running play out of the shotgun. That's something he can do. He's, he's done plenty of jet sweeps in his career, and the Cowboys aren't afraid to use him as a punt returner either. So that's one thing I really love about watching Kellen Moore coach is he knows who his playmakers are, and he's not afraid to find them touches as many ways as possible. You know, Tony Pollard's not as big of a name as C.D. Lamb, but he's another guy who the Cowboys know that he's got an explosive element to his game and you're seeing them find creative ways to put the ball in his hands. Yeah, on that note, what's, um, 
I don't want to say what's the pecking order as far as running backs go, but how much more involved will Pollard be in this offense? I mean, he's clearly shown that he is capable. Uh, where do they balance, you know, touches between he and Zeke? I think you're, I think you're seeing it right now, and honestly, it's it's been a talking point for a while. Depending on how closely you follow the Cowboys, I mean, Tony Pollard is not a newcomer to this situation. He's he's been a weapon since he got into the league in 2019. And it's easy to argue the Cowboys have been underutilizing him. You know, he was averaging about eight touches per game across the board for the first two years of his career. And you see him blow up the other day with 10 plus carries for a hundred plus yards. And I think that's going to continue. I think his versatility helps with that a little bit. He was a receiver a little bit in college at Memphis. He's played in the slot some for them. So he can do some of that jet action stuff, jet sweeps, and, and maybe even some route running. He returns kicks for this team. Um, So, you know, Zeke is always going to have a role in this offense, and he should. But I think you will continue to see those those snap shares go up. Maybe not a true 50-50 split, uh, but the Cowboys know that Pollard is an explosive weapon, and and I don't think Kellen Moore is afraid afraid to get him more and more work. A mistake on my part. Have somebody from the Dallas Cowboys talking Dallas Cowboys in Mississippi and did not start with Dak Prescott. So... Uh, buried the lead for about nine minutes. Uh, how would you evaluate his play so far, and uh, how healthy is he? I mean, it's all systems go at this point, and and I think there were a lot of questions about that over the summer, and rightfully so, between the ankle, uh, and then he has the shoulder issue, and everybody's saying, well, yeah, but is it actually healthy? And he comes right out of the gate and throws 60 times against the Buccaneers and looks absolutely incredible doing so. I know he didn't win the game, but that was one of the best three games he's ever played, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe the best, honestly, just in terms of his ball placement, his clutch, uh, the way that he was just standing in there. He took a beating in that game. Um, this game against the Chargers didn't really, uh, you know, it was not a passing matchup. The, the Chargers were giving up the run in an effort to defend the pass. The Cowboys ran for 200 yards. Part of what makes this offense so fun is they can do a little bit of everything. But I thought Dak was masterful in the reads that he made, uh, the way that he moved the offense downfield, and then when the game's on the line, you get the ball with four minutes to go. You let him downfield for the game-winning field goal. I think that was the 16th game-winning drive of his career, and he's only 28. So um, he he looks fantastic, and he absolutely looks like he's poised to, to pick up where he left off before he got hurt last year. Only about 60 seconds left, David. I got to know, have you and Dak made any kind of wager for this weekend with the Bulldogs and Tigers <laughs> hooking up? You know, it's it's a little harder to do that type of stuff with the COVID protocols and the restrictions. Um, plus, it's you know, the Cowboys play Monday night, so I we haven't talked to him yet. I'll definitely uh, I'll try to get some trash talk in when I see him later this week. But, um, you know, the way LSU looked in the – CLA, I'm probably going to dial it down a little bit because I'm not not quite as confident and as confident as I normally would be for a Mississippi State matchup. So maybe I'll I'll try to tone it down a little bit this year. Once again, though, I just wanted to thank you personally on the air for the funniest moment in my time on this show. Last time you were on, referring to Richard Cross, Ole Miss sideline reporter, as a Mississippi State person. I don't know that hey. I will ever laugh that hard again. I mean, I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't know him at the time, but I have I have no regrets, and I just want to make it clear. <laughs> LSU LSU might be playing state this weekend, but like if we're talking Mississippi schools, I mean, go to hell, Ole Miss forever. Oh, he oh, just dropped so, it. He did it. He did it. Uh, so oh. I mean, uh. you know, hey, Mississippi State's the enemy this weekend, but Ole Miss is always the enemy. So uh. trying to curry some favor with the Bulldog faithful there. <laughs> You've got it, I promise. So. <laughs> it's David Hellman with the Dallas Cowboys, DallasCowboys.com. Check out his work. It's always good, and he's always gracious with his time. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll be watching on Monday night. Anytime, y'all. Appreciate it. Go Tigers. There he-